What's going on? Welcome back to Canadian Dividend. So today we're going to talk to you about Bell. I want to go over some of the current data points, break it down on what's really been affecting it and where it might be going from here next. Before I get into any of that, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And with that said, let's get right to it. So at the time of doing this video, it is sitting at $45.86. So over this last little bit, the performance has been crap. So six months down 15% over the last one year down 23.83%. And so a lot of people People really did like Bell due to the yield. So right now it does have a yield of 8.7%. I have brought up time and time again as a very major concern their payout ratio, which is currently 120.56%. As I've kind of alluded to, I do feel Q3 of this year they will be cutting their dividends. I could be wrong about that, but it's this isn't sustainable and their underlying business has suffered dramatically initially due to higher interest rates that really affected their consumers because even looking at a lot of the consumer data that's been coming out it has been crap so the canadian economy isn't all that great and this is why in my rsp and tax-free savings account i've been focusing on more american stocks rather than canadian i do own bell in both of those portfolios but aside from that though i have been rotating out of canadian in to American because just the data that's been coming out shows that something big is afoot and Bell is very heavily reliant on consumers having money earning money and all of that fun jazz and right now they haven't really been doing that uh, of course majority of you as well who are watching from Canada will know exactly what I'm talking about how things have been very difficult no different for Bell so all in all Bell's performance has been absolutely crap and plus the news that came out a couple days back is not good so this came out from moody's so it does show that they changed their rating from stable to negative so this isn't just a typical analyst this is talking about the structure the health of bell is getting downgraded and when it comes down to bell they have a enormous amount of preferred shares and plus even aside from that bell does kind of act like more of a fixed income kind of component. So in essence, the higher the interest rate, the inverse the stock price. So again, that's one aspect that's really hurt Bell over the last little bit. So a kind of downgrade is detrimental to the stock. So despite that though, shorts haven't really gotten into Bell. So right now, 1.02% of the free flow is being shorted. Utilization is 10.08%. And then cost of borrow average is negative. So that does mean that brokers or several brokers out there are physically paying people to short Bell. Despite that incentive though, you're seeing shorts not really doing all that much. So like I said, 1.02% of the free float, and that works out to be 9.26 million shares overall are being shorted but despite shorts not really getting in uh, bell's underlying business has been suffering dramatically and just to give you a quick overview for instance of some of the data points that i like to look at one of which is analysts so based on this so the latest analyst ratings that have come out are right here so last one was done about 19 days ago by joseph who does have a 64 percent success rating argus research did give a downgrade no price target was given but aside from that, Barclays Keenan or Canon, 57% success rating, 5126. So as a consensus, all analyst ratings uh, do feel that's about 20% upside from these prices. So I feel like even analysts did not anticipate Bell's underlying business to perform as crappy as what it is. And plus, again, a lot of the data points behind the scenes is starting to deteriorate. So it's not really helping Bell all that much. So let me know your thoughts on that while I'm actually on here looking at the Elliott Wave technicals. So last time I did give an update, it did project for it to go down to 45. And lo and behold, here we are. So right now it does have a pivot point of $47.80. So for as long as Bell is trading below that, then it is anticipated to get between that 4230 and 4320 so more of a further downtrend even based on these levels so it is really breaking down uh, on the fundamental business despite possible interest rates getting cut um, in the foreseeable future in the next several months so once again that could really help the underlying stock price but from now until then it is really pointing to lower lows happening so let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below but on a side note if you're looking for a lot of good compiled information such as analyst ratings 
forecast for upcoming earnings, ownership breakdown on who owns it, what they've been doing. Take a look at Interactive Brokers for all this information to be completely free. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. Link in the description below and also the comments. But quickly moving on though to look at some additional data, more specifically options. On Friday, 28 or $29,000 in calls being purchased versus 121 in puts. And sentiment wise though, 55% of all the options being done are bearish. So even though Bell has pulled back quite considerably, people are still anticipating for it to continue to trend down so much further. And some points to watch for. So with it at $45.86, it is currently trading between this S1 and the pivot. So on Friday, it did touch this S1, so 45.60, so that's a very strong support. But like I said, with the broader trend uh, that's happening right now, I feel like that is going to break. So 44.59 will be that next strong support below that, below this S1. And then if that does break, then this is where the Elliott Wave technicals are kind of predicting for it to go. And so that would be the 42.97. So let me know your thoughts on Bell. Have you been buying? Have you been selling? Like I mentioned, I do own it both in my tax-free savings account and RSP. I have a fairly good average on both. So 49 in one or sorry, 48.50 in one and then $50 in the other. But still, though, if it does trend down to 42, I might have to average down. Uh, but again, the underlying business is very much struggling and we haven't really gotten into a full on recession. Still, there's been a lot of sectors outperforming and those ones aren't really directly linked to consumers. And as of late, it has been that consumer aspect that's been really dragging down a lot of the Canadian market uh, specifically. So I think right now there's still a lot more pain for Bell, um, not enough for me to essentially sell out and take the loss on that, only because if you do look bigger picture, Bell does typically go through these periods of a good year, year and a half, where it does continue just to trend down and then it reverts back up. So it is, it does go through cycles. If you do have an average of let's say 72, then yeah, I would be a little bit worried because at that time there was a huge amount of capital getting into the markets, into the equity markets but I don't know if we're ever gonna be touching that anytime soon, so I'd be a little bit more concerned if, uh, as far as that. But if you do have an average closer to mine around here, then yeah, I'd, I'd feel pretty comfortable with that. But of course, take that with a grain of salt because once something gets on a very vicious death spiral, it is sometimes hard to recoup from that. So let me know your thoughts on Bell. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Have you been buying? Have you been selling? Let me know your thoughts on all that. With all that said, appreciate all of you watching though.